Okay, hello, hello, Tyler Bryden here. I hope everything is going well. Another crazy week in AI, lots of stuff coming out. I'm gonna highlight one release in particular, which is from who else? It's OpenAI, exciting for the no-code community here. And that is a new action in Zapier, which is create transcription. That's directly from OpenAI. That's leveraging their Whisper API, which is an incredible speech to text system. You can go up to 25 megabytes for audio and video and take spoken language converted into text. And you can do that in multiple languages. I should give you all the languages. I'll see if I can pull that resource up. But what I wanted to do is walk through a setup on Zapier today that would actually leverage this integration in a meaningful way. Before I do that, I'll just give a little bit of context about Whisper. That was Whisper API from OpenAI, March 1st, 2023. This is the introduction of ChatGPT and then the Whisper API. In a way, Whisper got overshadowed by ChatGPT's release, obviously, which has just taken off like crazy. But the Whisper capabilities are pretty insane in their own way. And there's actually been a lot of, I would say, innovation on top of that. I'll quickly talk about some of the limitations of the Whisper API, which first of all, the advantages here are that it's quick. And what I mean by quick is that Whisper is quick right, in returning the transcription response from say even longer audio and video files. Now, there are some limitations, the 25 megabyte, I'm guessing that limitation is gonna be broken. One of the other pieces here is that the speakers are not separated in the necessarily ideal way. The timestamp creation is not ideal, but these are changes that are happening quickly. These are limitations that a company as good as this is knowledgeable about and is already taken care of. And then there are these managed instances of this. So I'll just quickly highlight that. One of the introductions here was from Deep Graham who introduced Nova and that's built on the Whisper API and is a managed service for it. So it allows you to get it back quicker at a cheap cost. It allows you to get those timestamps, the speaker identification, all of that great stuff. And there's something comparisons here for the accuracy piece. The other way that we've seen this release has been Whisper Jax from Hugging Face, which is an optimized implementation of the Whisper model by OpenAI. So another exciting innovation on top of what was originally an open source release, there is the GitHub library here. All of these will be resources directly um, in the YouTube description on the website if you're checking out there. And this opens up a lot of possibilities between the open source, between the API, that OpenAI has released to allow you to interact with Whisper. And a lot of the innovation is at a core level focused on these large language models, chat GPT engines. Um, the interaction layer of voice is super important and I think will continue to play a big role. And so I'm guessing behind the scenes, these models are continuing to be optimized. We're gonna see improvements along the way with Whisper and just speech recognition in general and people building on top of it. Now, a couple of quick things on the origin story of this. This is Yohei, an incredible person to follow if you are interested in this space. And he built the original OpenAI Zapier integration. He did that without permission. That has now become the integration that OpenAI has on Zapier. And you can see that here, we've got things that it can be paired with. There's some great uh, pre-made autograms that you can try, you can test. And then generally Zapier, two things. I apologize if I'm about saying this wrong every time. You've got the triggers, which they don't have set up yet. And then you've got the actions and they've continued to build these actions out, check moderation, generate image, API request, which is in beta, create transcription, which is the new one that we're talking about this video, send prompt. And then there's the embeddings ones, which I haven't actually interacted with this embeddings too much, but if you are paying attention to this space at all, embeddings is an incredible technology. And I hope to do some more video and content on that. But for now, let's focus on the create transcription using Whisper from an audio or a video file. So. I have created, and I apologize, I was playing around with this, a little bit of a workflow. And now it's interesting, like I run a company called Speak AI. We do transcription, we do natural language process. We work with 35,000 teams. They take generally like focus groups and all types of data, dump it into Speak and it becomes a research repository that they can analyze. And there's a couple you know, core things that are valuable within Speak that aren't available to you within OpenAI, but their one layer is transcription. And so we're always searching for solutions in transcription that are extremely valuable, cost-effective, return responses quickly. And then our customers obviously care how accurate is this transcription. And one of the things that Whisper has done nicely has been to be able to handle accuracy and even accuracy in noisy situations. And so that's something that we've seen 
as a value proposition of Whisper and then lends that model to be valuable in certain circumstances. And one of the ways that we actually see people using Speak is interesting. It's called this embeddable recorder. You can create an iframe. You're allowed to record audio. It captures the audio and then instantly in Speak, it will start to transcribe it and analyze it. So there's that core functionality built directly in Speak but it also then just produces the audio or video file that someone has uploaded. So a lot of time we see people doing user feedback or research, et cetera, et cetera. And we get this audio and video file. And one of the things I've looked at in this Zapier integration was how can I take this file that comes? So we have a trigger in Speak AI that allows you to pick out the transcript and everything there. And it's got the keywords and timestamps, but you can also see that there is a URL for storage, which is the MP3 file collected from this embeddable recorder. So I was like, okay, let's take this and then pass it to OpenAI's action, which is the create transcription. And this is where it opens up some nice um, opportunities just because of the default integration into Zapier. And, uh, and so I just wanted to walk through this as it was a new release. And I think a couple interesting points here. So you create your OpenAI authentication with Zapier. It's easy to set that up. It's stored once you're set up. It's, it's there. Maybe it asks you to reauthorize now and then, but overall you're going to be pretty good to go. And then all you need to do is pass the file to OpenAI, Whisper API, or the Whisper Zapier integration will take care of the rest. And so in this case, I pass that MP3 from Speak. It does have this disclaimer, 25 megabytes, and it needs to be in these following formats. So there are a lot of formats in audio and video. These are some of the most popular ones. And generally, you're going to make this work or you can even convert files before. There's lots of different ways to handle this. I'm guessing one of their core focuses is to increase the supported file types that they can ingest from a transcription. Now, the other part that this is interesting, I've played around with this a little bit and haven't necessarily seen the impact on it as much as I was hoping, or I think this idea of prompt is that um, you think of it very flexible and effective, but it seems like in this case, a prompt is more specific around transcription to improve the quality of it, including specific keywords, acronyms in the audio, and that's going to help you reduce misspellings. It can help you include punctuation, don't include punctuation. So you can adjust the output here. Now, I haven't seen significant effects. I've done a couple of tests. You can see I was asking about timestamps and speakers. Can you remove that from an SRT file? And we'll talk about file types that you can export. But it is an interesting piece here is where you could set up a prompt that then automatically inserts context to the Whisper API to then improve the accuracy or improve the output of the transcription that it's doing. And the other piece that's interesting here is that you can select the response format that you want. So there are right now one, two, three, four, five outputs that are available to you. One of them being text, plain text SRT files and WebVTs, which are generally used for closed captioning or subtitling. So that's a great file format and standardized output that allows you to upload and create captions quickly. So I think this is going to be a pretty big value proposition for a lot of people using this system, especially when you consider the accuracy and then the formatting needed for that. And then you've also got JSON and then verbose JSON. JSON is generally a data structure type that a lot of times developers are using to nicely format data. And then the verbose, I haven't done as deep as experiment on that, but I'm guessing is just a more detailed one, possibly includes ums and ahs and things like that, where it gives you a little bit more detail and you can pick that format that you want. There are multiple languages here. There's a default inherent English language that it will default to if you don't add, and it does ask you to do the ISO format. So I'll pop that open just as a resource for you. I'll also drop a link about the supported langu languages on Whisper. I should have done my research before. I'm an idiot. And then you can see the trans transcription was sent to OpenAI. This was the file that I took. So it was a short recording, nothing too crazy. What I liked about it, a nicely formatted, simple again, paragraph structure, but the speed that it came back at. So I had about 30 seconds maybe recording on this and it was back within a couple seconds. And when you are interacting with any technology, the speed, it's a really valuable proposition that increases your overall experience. So with the Whisper API and at that speed, uh, a very exciting evolving of how quickly transcription data can return. And previously it was generally like a one-to-one -one basis. You take an hour, to upload and it's going to come back in an hour. And we can look at even in these benchmarks that they talked about for the Nova speech, which is the Whisper API and fine tuned and improved. You have, it's going to take you 12 seconds per audio hour. So you've got in for an audio hour, it only took 12 seconds to come back with Nova. The version was 49 seconds and then OpenAI's core 
Whisper API, which is what we're interacting with here, is 158 seconds, then it falls behind. And I think there's a couple other platforms that are even slower than that. Even though, like, even AWS, 279 seconds to get back an audio hour is pretty mind blowing from where we used to be. So I wanted to then think about what we could do with this. I think this is where it opens up a lot of capabilities. We've got this functionality embedded directly in Speak. It opens up a lot of capabilities, especially with the different file formats, the hierarchy of information, how you can store a bunch of information that allows you to do a lot of things where grab file, create transcription, you can run a prompt, and then you're chaining together these events for something meaningful. And I had a short file in this little walkthrough here, but say it's a longer file, it's a meeting, and it still fits within that 25 megabytes. You can not only get the transcription, you can chain together a prompt. You can handle all this within just one zap, which I mean, you're not going to run up that zap bay bill, which I've done many times, <laughs> plugging things together and putting into the loops and all of that stuff. And then you can ask for something that's maybe more of a summary or action items, or depending on the data that's flowing in this recording, something valuable. And in that file, you can more explicitly grab that out. And it comes with all the other fine tuning mechanisms that OpenAI set up nicely. I talked about this in this video, if you are interested, just the about how you can customize it. And that was one of the more popular videos and I appreciate everyone's feedback on that. So you can continue, you can test that action now. I don't think I got the most ideal output here. You can see the text that came and it just comes down to, it was a short file, but I'm just showing you the path through. I can continue and then when you think about this, what we think about at Speak AI and just in life in general is that we're pretty integrated into systems. And when I have data flow through, I think of data come in, I think there's the analysis layer, and then generally I wanna send that somewhere. And I use a pretty simple example in this, which is create a document from text in Google Docs, and then I'm just using the output, that summary layer that the OpenAI has provided me to then give me that output. Same thing, authenticate your Google Doc. I can specify the file name, which originally came from Speak, and then I can do the output from OpenAI, Open which is the final summary after I took the transcript and then ran this prompt against it. This is choices text, which I think they could be maybe a little bit more specific if I, this is my feedback, maybe a little specific with the name. It's a little bit abstract, but when you see the data that you're inserting, you can see that it's right here. So you can click that and then you can even specify where you want that to go. So you could think of this as, hey, send it to me in Trello, send it to me in a Google Calendar, send it to anywhere that Zapier hooks up. You can quickly then sort of take audio, transcribe, analyze, and then pass it somewhere meaningful. And I think this is where we see the future of a lot of this technology is like workflow enablement and easily and frictionlessly passing data through to then create insights and send them to the right place. In this case, simple output, but I got my Google Doc here. I've got the name and then I've got the action plan, which again, not, probably not the best. It's not the best output, not the most specific. And that's not, I would say, OpenAI's fault. That's my fault for the limitation of the file that I had recorded from Speak and then dumped into this system and process for the sake of this demo here. But either way, I hope you got some insight around this process. I think I can even share this. Maybe I'll share this so you have a pre-structured flow. And this just opens up, I hope opens up ideas of what is possible with this kind of integration. Uh, super exciting time. Now I have interesting... I guess, conflicted feelings about this. I think there's some amazing companies who have built incredible speech recognition systems. I think that we've done a lot of work at, with speech recognition at Speak AI. And I think OpenAI has just some incredible power right now to release these disruptive integrations and features and capabilities directly into something like Zapier, where maybe a bunch of people who had relied previously on some of these companies dedicated to it, like DeepGram, like Assembly AI, all of a sudden can chain together things. And that's a disruptive thing. I think we're going to see disruptive disruption with that from Speak AI. I think there are so many limitations that are not fully considered about the amount of data, the length, how you handle all those data flows, but it's still a super interesting time and thing to think about. But overall for myself, I'm passionate about the technology. I'm passionate about solutions here. I think this is a great one. And again, Zapier, it's just an, uh, one of my favorite companies and the beautiful journey of sort of funding and how they actually put all this together. But sometimes it can be a little bit cost prohibitive to flow a bunch of zaps. And if you've say hundreds, if not thousands of files coming on a daily or weekly, that can rack up pretty nicely. But even if we look at maybe the price and cost structure of Whisper, 
it could be significantly lower than the price structure of some speech recognition systems. And so maybe you're evening out or maybe you're making money, or again, maybe you need to still work with these companies to build integrated solutions to enable what you want to do with these kind of technologies, which at a core level is absolutely unbelievable, mind blowing. I love it. And I'm following along excitedly, being part of it, benefiting from this and working with some amazing people, building these AI capabilities directly into their businesses, to their organizations, into their personal lives. And it's a successful time. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a video on OpenAI's whisper transcription action within Zapier. I did a little walkthrough. I got a bunch of links for you. If you did like it, comment, subscribe, give me some feedback, give me some ideas that you're having when you connect your flows. Always love to hear from you. And I appreciate you following along this journey. I'll be making some more videos. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.